All right, it's time for Q and A. We got nine questions, and they're all wrestling related. You might think that pissed me off. However, I find that to be a good thing because if it was political questions, and I don't really have a forte to give an interesting response to like. Fringe has its evolutionary psychology, asymmetrical warfare has his nerdism. I mean, he's really nerdy, and when you're nerdy like he is, you're used to a lot of interesting f franchises, and if you're interested in a lot of franchises, you're probably interested in stories you never heard of that are extremely fleshed out, and because they're fleshed out and interesting, what you would think would be really interesting too. Like you have that going for you. Arini has the writer thing. Gra, who's really underrated, has the reactionary sociology shit. And there's a lot of guys that they have their own little skills that they put on the table. Me, I'm bare bones. I analyze things. I'm very analytical. I'm Taurus. I'm Earth sign. A lot of libertarians, by the way, are Earth signs. I guess it's because of the whole practicality shit. I guess they got that going for them. But anyway, let's get started. Number one, should Santino Morella turn heel? No, he should stay face. The reason he should stay face is because Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, and John Cena are these faces that they have a very limited amount of people that they can face when they're when they're in one side so they have to do these face turns or heel turns. John Cena doesn't do that, that's why he gets stale a little bit. But the reason for that is that these are guys that have to face main eventers or up and coming main eventers. Like guys like uh Randy or in Triple H also apply. However, guys like Santino, they can face the lowest jobber and the biggest legend. Because they got it like that. Like, Santino could face Jinder Mahal one day, and then he could face The Undertaker another day, and it'd still be fucking cool. So there isn't a need to do this. What they do need to do is, instead of changing up his character by turning him heel, they should just make his character less infantile. You don't have to make him into this vulgar guy that talks about semen and um, lobotomies every second. He could just maybe throw in pop culture references that are relevant and funny, like when he said that Chris Jericho's hair looked like Lindsay Lohan. That fucking worked. He doesn't have to be a Chuck E. Cheese catered character. Try saying that five times fast. He doesn't have to do all that shit. He could just be himself and it'd still be very entertaining because he's a cool guy and he's funny. You don't have to make him stupid. He's already a funny guy. And he can do it without being very gross. He ain't a triple H. He's not going to he doesn't need to say suck it. Two, should the primetime players be tag team champions? Well, it depends. I mean, they shouldn't be champions just to be champions. Like, are they great in ring technicians? Do they have anything about them that basically show that they're entertaining? Because if not, then personally, I think that the tag team champion should get championship should get thrown out the fucking window. Because like, I mean, our truth and Kofi Kingston have it, and they should keep having it because they're great in ring technicians. However. I think that the tag teams shouldn't just be all matches. They should have like little promo segments, and that's what I really want to see. So, 
to me, I'm not going to answer this question by saying this. Should they be champions? Yes. When they show it. When they can prove that they can make the tag team championship just more than something for crappy tag team matches and back from breaks. Three, should Alberto Del Rio change his attire? He already did, and I actually like his new attire. It looks pretty cool. That black shit is... It looks nice. I mean, I'm not a fashionista, and... I don't think ADR is the type that's gonna sell merch. But I like the way he looks. He looks exquisite. Like, if I'm inviting a guy to a party... And it's going to be the sharp-dressed guy that all the girls are going to go around. It'd definitely be ADR. Even He definitely dresses very well. Even his ring clothes. Um, four. What are your thoughts on Antonio Cesaro bringing back the European Championship? I definitely support Antonio Cesaro on that. Because... With the European Championship, you can at least ascend to Triple Crown or Grand Slam, be a Grand Slam champion. And you can't do that with the United States title. The United States title isn't going to make you a Grand Slam champion or a Triple Crown champion. For some reason, I don't know. Okay. One, what are your thoughts on Brock Lesnar leaving the WWE and never coming back? It's bullshit. We all know it to be true. And I kind of like the hypocrisy of Brock Lesnar. Even though it's just another chicken shit thing, at least it's chicken shit in a different way. It's not that he's scared of heel all of a sudden and he's crooked as fuck. He's just lazy and he wants... To basically sit back and get money handed to him. Which is a nice interpretation of Brock Lesnar. I like how in the WWE characters are just reflections of the real the real selves, with the exception of ADR and those traditional heels. Gender especially. Two, who will win Royal Rumble 2013? Why am I botching all of a sudden, like, my speech? But my thoughts is that the person that's going to win Royal Rumble 2013 ideally would have to be... Hmm, who would I want to see win Royal Rumble 2013? It'd definitely be for the World Heavyweight Championship. Hmm. Let me think. Cody Rhodes. I definitely like to see Cody Rhodes win that. Or somebody, maybe Damian Sandal. Either Cody Rhodes or Damian Sandal. I like a heel to fucking win. And go on to be the world heavyweight champion. And I like those two because those two are really fucking interesting. I can't take my eyes off of them. Uh, what are your thoughts on Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd as a tag team? Well, I like both of them. I like Justin Gabriel just because he's from South Africa and Tyson Kidd because he's that Canadian thing. It, they have that thing about them that keeps them from being really interesting. Like, maybe not as characters, but as in-ring technicians. The way I'd see it, them being a tag team, for it to work, they're not going to have to win the title for a long time. They can keep it for a month or two if they ever reach that high in success but they can go into like 
foods and shit like that. They're not a tag team I think would be really fucking awesome because none of them have great mic skills, none of them get time on the mic. And to me that's the big thing because you could be a great in-ring technician but if you're really boring as hell then what's the point? I like the little moments in the WWE where crazy shit happens. And crazy shit doesn't happen to great in-ring technicians. It happens to people that it can entertain in various ways. Four. How far will Ryback go in WWE? And five. How will Tense, uh, how far will he go in WWE? Both these questions are very interconnected. And while I like to give half answers, to these questions, I feel like for both of them, I guess I can just rip the bandage. Ryback and Tensai, I don't think that they'll go far as anything other than Umaga's. Why? Because if an Umaga, you got a World Heavyweight Championship match that would be really interesting, but you know they're not going to win the title. And if they do, it's not going to be for a long time. And it's not going to be one of those memorable title reigns. You see, that's probably as far as they should go. And for Tensai, that might be stretching it a little bit. But they can make it work. I mean, I was feeling Tensai back in the Cena versus Lesnar feud. I was feeling him. I was feeling what they were doing with him. With Ryback, I mean, he's getting into more and more squash matches, and I thought that it would get boring and repetitive, but with the left are doing it and things like that, it feels more like it's aimed towards something and not just. Not just repetitive stupidity that becomes tedious. They've had him for like a while and then he squashes some local talents and then some other niggas come and they attack right back and it sets up for a feud. They could do something with him. But he he should really just be on an Umaga level. Um, so those are my nine answers, and I really wish that it could be more interesting. This isn't going to be one of my favorite videos, but alright, at least we got this Q&A shit over with. And what can you learn from all of this shit? Well, main thing you should learn is that... In the WWE, it's really about the big feuds, storylines, interesting characters. And the way you make shit interesting is by having the characters throw in really fucking awesome promos and really badass matches. There's no other way to get to it. I mean, you can have a boring ass match between two greats. Triple H versus Kevin Nash really fucking sucked. And in contrast, you can have a Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler where Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler were only a few years from reaching their great accolades. But they still threw in an excellent fucking match. And it was, in my opinion, the match of 2010. And that's basically all I gotta say. There's no other way to get to it. It's gotta be interesting matches, interesting characters, interesting everything. If somebody really boring as hell became the first undisputed champion, then, like X-Pac, it wouldn't have been the same. It wouldn't. 